Hello, it's Rebecca here from Precious Pages Papercraft and today I'm sharing a layout for pear tree cut files. So this video does class as an advertisement. Today I am working with the Halloween title cut file. Uh, this was a new one, part of the October release, so it's now available on the website to buy. And I've cut it on my silhouette using a black textured cardstock. And my plan is to go around and back each separate element of the cut file in a different patterned paper. So I started off with the witch's hat and I'm using a black glittered cardstock that I've had for years. But it is so super thick that it was really hard to cut. And I also struggled to get it to stick down because my glue pen didn't work. So I had to come back in with some glossy accents over the top. Um, and rest a cup of tea on top for a couple of minutes just to get it to stick because just nothing wanted to stick to it. So note to self, don't use glittered cardstock again. I'm mainly sticking to two different Halloween collections for this layout. Both are by Doodlebug Design. One is called Pumpkin Party and the other one is Candy Carnival. I think that's the 2018 and 2019 Halloween collections from them. And I'm just going to use um, a different pattern paper for each element. Uh, so you can see from the bat here, I decided to try and line his eyes up with some eyeballs on this patterned paper, uh, just to give him some cute little eyes there. Um, I won't make you watch me do the whole cut file. If you are interested in seeing um, how to back a cut file, one of our other design team members, um, SC Jane, has made a brilliant um, video tutorial that you can find on her YouTube channel. It's really helpful if you are new to backing cut files. Uh, so that's my cut file all backed off camera. Now I'm going to start with my mixed media background. I'm starting off with a Lindy's Starburst spray. Um, these are lovely, these sprays. They've got a shimmer to them. Um, this one is called Sassy Sapphire. And it's a lovely turquoise blue. I wasn't sure initially what colour to use for my background because the patterned papers have got so many different colours in themselves. Um, there was a hint of blue in a couple of them, but not a lot, which is how I came to the decision to go with blue. So I've also added in a Distress Oxide there in Broken China. And I also use a Distress Ink Pad in Salty Ocean. And I just try to build my background up layer at a time, drying in between with either a kitchen towel or a heat gun. Um, that just means that as I add my splatters, they don't all soak into a wet background. And drying it in between, I find helps prevent my page from warping so much. So I've just simply used the packaging technique to create my background and then coming in with a paintbrush to add the splatters in between each layer. Um, I think for some of the splatters I mix the Salty Ocean with the Lindy spray just to make it a little bit darker. And as I said, just drying that in between each layer so that my splatters um, stand out a bit more. And then I finish off my background with some black paint splatters. This is another Distress Ink pad and it's called Black Soot. So I figured you can never have too many paint splatters. So I go a bit mad and add loads of black and then use my heat tool to dry that. And then just try and manipulate the page a bit to iron it out and get rid of some of that warping. So you'll notice I'm scrapping Halloween um, before Halloween's actually happened this year. So this photo is from 2019. Our friends own a farm up the road and at Halloween they grow thousands upon thousands of pumpkins and they kit their barn out, um, once the cows are out in the field, they kit their barn out full of pumpkins and all Halloween displays so you can get some brilliant photos up there. And we just go up there every year with Riley and buy loads of pumpkins and we get loads and loads of photos which is really nice. We always look forward to going up there. I've mounted my photo onto white cardstock and then again onto black and then I'm coming in with a um, orange and black patterned paper. Once I had stuck this down I realised I wasn't overly happy with it because the colours are more 
sort of a vintage feel to them. You can just see on the back there. So it didn't really go too well with the bright and bold colours I'd used in my cut file. So I came in again with another layer of orange, this time um, from one of the Doodlebug collections. So it is really bright and bold. Um, and it just makes it pop a bit more. So I was a lot happier with that. I apply a layer of double-sided sticky tape all over the back of my cut file to stick it down and just a layer of craft foam behind my photo just to add a bit of depth and dimension to my layout. Um, I'm not a fan of flat layouts, I'd much rather have a lot of texture and dimension. So I always use foam to back things, uh, sorry, to raise things up. Um, I'm going to add a border in around the edge of my page. I really love adding borders, it's just sort of one of the things I always do. Um, I also find if you've done a mixed media background, it helps to iron out some of the warping. So I'm using a orange and black diagonal striped patterned paper. This is from the Pumpkin Party collection. And I've just trimmed my white cardstock down and I just distress the edges with the blade of my scissors. And then I'll apply um, just a run of double-sided sticky tape all the way around the edge. I don't go right up to the edge because once I've turned it over and stuck it down, I do like to run my thumb along the edge just to distress it a little bit further. So if you tape right up to the edges, you won't be able to do that. So I always leave only a couple of mil, but just, just enough that I can just use my thumb just to turn those edges up a little bit more. And now I'm happy with the placement of everything and it's all stuck down and I've got my page border on. I work, start working on my embellishments. So my Halloween stash is made up of a multitude of different collections. I love Halloween, so I've got bits and pieces from everything and everywhere. Um, so I've got a chipboard sheet there from Simple Stories and this big 12 by 12 one is by Bella Boulevard. So I'm just selecting bits and pieces that work well either with my theme or the colour scheme I've used. Um, so I've got some stars there you can see I've pulled out and I think that's supposed to be some sort of candy lollipop. And I'm just scattering them around the edges on my page just to see where I want things to sit. This ephemera pack is the Doodlebug Candy Carnival um, ephemera pack I'm just going through that because it matches the colors in the photo uh, sorry, in the cut file really well and I've just selected a few things that I'm going to use I've got this old sort of cut apart sheet from an older collection I just fussy cut the pumpkin out from that and then those little um, phase ephemera things you see there they all had little speech marks they're all meant to be speech bubbles so they had a little like speech um, I don't know what you'd call it, a little thing coming out for speech. So I've just chopped those off because I don't really need those. They're not sort of coming out of anybody's mouth. So I've just snipped those off. And then I've got a, a little boy here who's dressed up as a spider, which works perfectly because in my photo, my little boy is wearing a spider costume. So I just fussy cut that out as well. And he's going to go down the bottom there. Now I've been through my thread stash and picked out some threads that work well with this layout. I've got green and orange and a purple. I'm just going to work in some thread tangles. I just find it helps to spread the colours around the layout a bit more in areas. So for example I've used green in underneath the happy Halloween ephemera piece there. There isn't a lot of green over that side. Whereas on the left, you've got that big A is mainly green. So I use the green thread, it just adds a bit of green. And the same for the top there, it wasn't an awful lot of orange behind that hat. So I've added in some orange and it just balances the page out nicely. And now I'm just sticking everything down. Some of these chipboard pieces um, have peel off backs, but they are quite old now. They've been in my stash for a couple of years at least, so they don't tend to hold their sticky too well, especially on a mixed media background. So I do end up peeling the backs off and just using glue to stick those down. 
Um, so some of the elements I'm sticking flat and others you'll see I'm using foam pads just to add a bit more dimension to the page. So you'll see there I, I picked the back off and then still had to add some glue to make sure it's stuck down. And these little um, banners or tabs, whatever you call them at the top there, I'm going to add some embroidery threads through the hole there just to add a bit more texture to the page. So I just pick out a couple of Halloween colours. I've got a green and I think that's a purple as well I've used. And I just double them over a few times and thread them through and then I'll snip the ends off. Um, just adds like almost like tassels, which I quite like the effect of. So I just leave them loose there, hanging over my photo because there's not much happening on that side of the photo. So it doesn't matter if a little bit of it is covered up. I've got another little um, cluster of pumpkins here I'm fussy cutting out. I think again these are from the Candy Carnival. Um, there was like a two by two elements patterned paper sheet in the collection. So I've just used that just to cut the pumpkins out and fill the space down the bottom there. And I'm going to raise the bottoms up onto foam pads and just glue the top because it's going to sit on the E and that's already raised up with the adhesive foam tape behind it. And then I just finish my page off with a black fine liner, adding a border all the way around the edge of the page, and that's me done. So thank you very much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. And if you head over to peartreecutfiles.co.uk, you can view all the latest cut files from the October release and the previous releases. So thanks very much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.